Welcome to Terminator HQ. My name is Wayne Harris and these videos chronicle my seemingly never ending effort to get the Terminator back to its original condition. Today, we're gonna to be working on the amplifiers, but before we start, let's talk about you guys. Last time, in the last episode, I requested a lot of input on what to do with the amp rack, whether I should use glass, whether I should put trim on it or magnets, and you guys really came through, and I have so many great ideas and suggestions, and I'm gonna be implementing some of those as we put the amp rack back together. Now, to do the testing, it's important to note that I have not had an opportunity yet to put the new batteries in the car. So right now I have to use these power supplies in order to provide power. These are the original Astrons that I used back in the day. And of course, uh, when I pulled them out, they had all kinds of problems. Uh, I went through and I repaired them. Uh, this is kind of a special stack. These amps actually work as a single unit. So they've been modified. This top one um, is the master and the other three uh, follow along. And by the way, I didn't write that. This is a friend of mine, Rick Jones. Thanks, Rick, for defacing my Astron power supply. So let's get started. This is actually the kind of stuff that I enjoy doing is the electrical testing. But before I could get started, I had to build this dummy load. Now a dummy load simulates the load of a loudspeaker. I didn't want to be testing my amps on my subs because if I had a problem with one of the amps, I didn't want to blow a subwoofer. Plus it's really noisy. And my subs really can't handle all of the power that these amplifiers are capable of producing. So what you have here, I built this this morning. I have um, each one of these is, think of it as a eight ohm resistor. There are eight ohm, they're rated at 1,000 watts each. It's a carbon pile resistor. And I built this little uh, assembly here, and I've got these terminal strips so I can actually reconfigure the load impedance. So today, because of the way my amps are running, I need a 4 ohm load. And so what I did is I took two of these, and they're wired together, so it provides a 4 ohm load, total load impedance. I'm also gonna be using TermLab. Now, we're not gonna do any SPL measurements. I'm just using TermLab to measure power. So, it was actually a lot more time consuming than I thought. Um, because I somewhere along the way, I lost all of the documentation for the wiring for the system. So I had to go through and identify which speakers went to which amplifier, and then also which of those uh, RCAs uh, went to each amp. Now I've got some really great news. I, I did cheat a little bit and when I was testing the amps, when I was trying to identify them, I had to turn them on so I could listen. And sure enough, uh, if you recall, one of those Power 1000s was making an oscillating sound in the subwoofers and back in one of the couple of episodes ago. I suspected the problem was in the Haffler crossover, not in the amplifier. And sure enough, when I took the uh, crossover out of the circuit, and just turn on the amp, there's no oscillation, and that amplifier works. So, we're gonna test a single amp, and I'll show you how it works. So I'm gonna just start a measurement here. For you guys that have Term Lab, you'll be real familiar with what we're looking at. Uh, this is showing the SPL. It's not really going to change because the sensor is sitting here on the bench and I'm not making any sound. This right here is going to show the power. This is showing the AC voltage and the AC current waveforms. And this right here is a phase meter. So it's showing the difference in phase between the voltage and current. Now, I don't expect much uh, of a difference here in phase because we're running into a resistive load. But there is some inductance because I have like a 25 foot speaker cable. So that adds a little bit of inductance. So, and then finally, I'm using a signal generator. This is a sine wave generator. And I use this to uh, generate a test tone. So right now, initially, we're gonna start, let's start with like a 40 hertz sine wave. And I'm gonna start applying power. 
now. We're up to one watt. These amps supposedly are capable of producing a thousand watts. Now they're, they're a four channel amplifier, so each channel is capable of producing 250 watts into, I think, four ohms. I'm sure that some of you guys are more familiar with these amps than I am. I forgot the specs, but what we're trying to do, uh, I'm bridging two of the channels into a single load, and I'm hoping to get close to 500 watts. So two channels is half of the amplifier. It's a thousand watt amp. If I can get to 500 watts or close, then the amp is doing its job. So here we go. And we're going to watch for clipping in the top of this waveform. You'll also see this Lissajou pattern. As I get close to clipping, it'll start deforming. And all right, we're already at 500 watts. So it's right on the money. Right on the money. You see a little bit of clipping. So definitely can do 460 watts without clipping. Um, let's see what happens. Can really crank that dude up. This is a lot nicer than listening to a sine wave, uh, you know, and cooking your voice coils. So using these dummy loads, this is a really great uh, trick. Now, one of the cool things about these true audio amplifiers is uh, they actually have a common power supply that stores energy in big capacitors and then that power is used for the audio circuitry and one of the things that we've been concerned with and I know some of you guys have suggested that I recap the amps but the difficulty of removing those amplifiers and recapping them makes me tired just thinking about it and it's also risky because you have to remove the PC board and remount the transistors and everything so one of the things that we're going to look for is what happens at lower frequencies. So right now, you know, if I play like 60 hertz, um, I'm going to turn it up a little bit. What we're going to look for is to see what happens as we go down in frequency. Now what normally happens in these kind of amps, it takes a ton of energy to supply uh, the audio circuitry at low frequencies and so really you need a lot of capacitance to do that if these caps were bad significantly bad then the power would dramatically drop off and I'm not talking a few watts or 10 watts you would end up with a huge drop in power and so now I'm down to 40 Hertz we're still holding at 440 watts it's going down a little bit So you can see that we've lost, it's not even a dB of power, um, but you know, I'm all the way down to 20 Hertz. So that's, I would say that's pretty darn good. Um, you know, we lost about 10% of our power, which is not a lot actually. So I would call this a pass. This amp definitely has passed the test. I'm really happy about that. Now I'm going to go through and test all of the amplifiers in the same way. Before I do that, and I'm not going to keep you guys around for that, let's see if we generated any. Yes, we did. We, we could definitely cook something on this resistor. Let's see how hot it is. Let's see what it looks like. Maybe you can see this thing. Okay, you can see that look at that those dudes they're really smoking 151 degrees right now so all that energy is being delivered to these resistors so here's the plan i'm going to finish testing all of the amps and then i'm going to replace those Hafler crossovers with an EPX2. Now, we talked about that. That's a product I designed. It would give me a lot of capability if I could put that in the vehicle. And so I'm gonna set it up here and give it a test. But that's gonna be in the next episode. 
So once again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. You know, if you have comments or suggestions, I'd really love to hear them. Until next time, keep it loud and make me proud. Did you stop recording? What I, want, what I wanted to say is, for all of you guys, my friends in this industry who make amplifiers, I got one thing to say to you. What the hell are you selling? This is an amplifier. You guys need to figure it out. What? <laughs>